Last year in the rescue zoo, this beautiful guy arrived. His name is Kato, and he's a desert lynx or carcal. And this is the story about Kato's new life after rescue in the rescue zoo. First day in the rescue zoo, Kato arriving. Kato arrived late in the afternoon to the rescue zoo, where all the keepers had prepared his first quarantine area. The reason why you use a quarantine area for the first 6 to 8 weeks is to make sure that the animals don't have any diseases that could spread to some of the other 600 animals. Kato was an illegal pet privately owned by a guy in France who was keeping him in his apartment. It was clear to be able to control Kato that his previous owner has been physical with Kato and punished him, so Kato's trust in people was something we needed to build up over time. Kato's first steps in the rescue zoo. After Kato's initial quarantine period in the rescue zoo was over, we had been working non-stop at his outdoor enclosure. First step was getting Kato out into the fresh air, and to make sure the enclosure would be as stress-free of an experience as possible for him, he started out in a smaller outdoor area. This way Kato could get used to the smells and the sounds of the rescue, and we could at the same time finish his big new enclosure for when he was ready to move in. Hi Alex! Hi Nico! So, for the last couple of weeks we have been following the progress of Kato, yeah. the car Kato's new enclosure. How are we doing? Well, so far so good. We've actually got uh, two handymen working on it at the moment, uh, trying to enlarge it, because obviously rescue situations and everything's not always prepared, but we had a decent sized enclosure for him for when we rescued him. And now the goal was just to get it bigger and the boys are nearly finished building the, the bigger enclosure that he's going to have. Um, and they've also got an... Um, today they put down the the pillar that's going to be in the middle so that we can make a really high net because obviously uh, the desert lynxes they like to hop really high and they've also managed to put the the base down as well because what with it coming from a very dry area african area we thought well it'd be nice to have a luscious area which is shaded so we still got a bit of green going on and then they've laid uh, a sandy base today down in the new the newer bit of the enclosure so it's starting to really come together um how long before we Maybe can get can put him outside. Um, uh, well, he's already outside. Oh, he's already outside. He's already outside because he's been enjoying the, the first bit of the enclosure. Basically, we're just waiting for the last little bits of material. Um, we need some netting and a little bit more of metal, and then the boys can put the top up. So I'm hoping that they should be finished sometime around next week, latest the week after, because it's just the materials we're waiting for now, and then they can get that up. Awesome. Moving into the new enclosure. Today is a big day and all the keepers and our zoo director Joan are together to observe as we let Kato out to his brand new outdoor enclosure. While we were all watching, Kato ran right out into his new enclosure. And even though it was clear that the many new smells, sounds and visual stimulations happening right now out in his new outdoor enclosure was a big deal to him, Kato was really handling it all so well. He did spin around looking at all the new stuff happening, but it was mostly from excitement and not stress. Starting his training. One of the ways we stimulate the animals mentally and physically is with behavioral training. The animals love the attention and they love the treats, but it also gives us a tool to create a stress-free way of getting up close, looking at our animals. And thankfully, Kato has not lost all trust in humans and is a very excitable young man that loves his training. Today is our very first time starting Kato's training, so let's talk with Alex and see how it all went. 
Right. Hi, Alex. Hi, Diego. Hi. So, just gonna do a little bit of an introduction to what we're doing here. So, okay. Kato, our new Lynx, Desert Lynx, or Desert Lynx. Kyle, yes. uh got his new enclosure. Well, his second new enclosure, yeah. the bigger one, and everything has been great. But mm -hmm. obviously, it's a it's a it's a big change for him. And it is. It's been a bit overwhelming for him, shall we say? Yeah. So. We, 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 have, we have noticed that it's so overwhelming that he is stressing a bit. Yeah. And again, we're going back to some of the subjects we have talked about on the stream before. Bigger is not always better. Yeah. It's about slowly progressing, especially animals who's been through a lot, uh, yeah. into a, a bigger and bigger enclosure. Uh, but one of the ways that we can sort of distract him is with uh, behavioral training. Exactly. So what we're doing today and what we're not doing today and... and it's gonna be like a, a, a progressional thing we're doing over time yeah. here. So what are we starting with today? Yeah, so simply because of the things that we've discovered with him being a bit overwhelmed in the bigger enclosure, a good idea is to start turning that area into a positive area. And the way we work here at the rescue is all of our training is done through positive reinforcement. So what we're going to try and do today is the absolute start of training. So I'm going to try and connect a sound with a treat. Um, but all this is going to ha happen in his newer enclosure. Um, so we're going to sit over there and hopefully he's going to come over and then we're going to do this, of course, a couple of times every day uh, and basically build on from there. As we're building on from there, that means once he starts connecting the food with the training and the treats and the sound that I'm making, then we can then evolve it onto other things towards husbandry training. And I actually have one of the tools with me just to show it off and then hopefully in the future we can show you how we progress with the training. Uh, the best tool I've ever discovered is a target stick. It is a very fancy piece of equipment. It is a broom handle with a tennis ball on the end. You made it yourself? <laughs> I made it myself. <laughs> um, and honestly, it doesn't even matter if it's a cat or a parrot or whatever. A target sticks are just brilliant because again, a lot of our training is done through a protected environment. So there's usually a, a fence or something between us, but this just gives them something to go off of. So the next step after he's can start connecting the food with the sound, we're going to start evolving onto target training and target training to start off with is basically all he's going to have to do is put his nose on the target stick and then he'll get a treat afterwards. And once he learns this, that basically means I have voluntary control over which in ever animal it is to be able to guide them onto weight to find out the weight of them or get them into various positions so you can do body score checks or so it's not a circus um, trick tra not at all not it's always always husbandry training we train it's never ever circus tricks we train and it's basically just so you can get a full view of the animal or if you thought the the animal needed an injection then you can train them to stand up against the fence so you can inject them without having to dart them down creating stress just to give them a simple injection um, so it's all to all the training that we do works towards the animals being voluntary uh, about it and coming over um, so we can help them with health checks basically and there might be more situations where you have to do it when it's basically sick animals you get in yeah. over uh, from time to time exactly so it's, it's, it's a it's a precautionary thing it's just so we're, we're prepared in the future because again let's say we need to move them to a different enclosure for example again target stick you put the box in target sticks at the other end he walks into the box put his nose on it treat there you go it's not a negative thing to go in a transport box so positive training is really the best thing when it comes to your, it comes to your animals cool let's uh let's do step one then then this is absolute step one remember this <laughs> there's not going to be any action <laughs> not that much action but hopefully you get to see him up close
All right, Alex. Yep. So, uh, so far so good. How was first time? What did you do? That was an amazing first time because when Kato first arrived, we did a lot of uh, training with uh, the various slides so that he knew when he had to go in and out and side to side. So luckily enough with the keepers, and that's, that's all of our keepers, he's been having a really, really good reaction with them because everything's been fun from the get-go. There's always been a, a prize at the end of it whenever we were doing something with them. So this was a really, really good, for a positive first step because I was in the new area of the enclosure, which was why we chose that area to make it um, a more positive area to be in. He came running over when we called him, and as he, I don't know if people on the video would have noticed the signs I was making with my mouth because I'm a trainer, which doesn't like to have to rely on, for example, a clicker is a brilliant tool, but what if you've forgotten it? Um, where you've always, you've always got your voice that you can use. So I use a click sound with my tongue. So it's basically So when the animal's right in front of me, they can hear that and that's the sound they react to. And then with this sound over the years I've noticed, they react just as well to the clicker when you do actually have it in your hand, and um, to the sound that you make with your tongue. And so it's just a start procedure, just because as you may have noticed, I had to use both my hands. I had to use the, I had to hold the bowl, and I had to have the tongue so I could sit and feed him through the fence while he's starting to connect the sound of this sound and the food together. Um, so it's a slow process, but once he gets it, he'll it'll go fast, I think, because. If anyone saw how fast he came running over, he, he wants to interact, which is brilliant considering the background that he's got. Yeah, obviously they're not gonna learn from doing clicks five times. No, it's no, no. You gotta do it a hundred times. Exactly. You, know? you gotta do it a couple of times a day over multiple days, and then once, because then you start. Because then this is just the start procedure. So I was clicking at the same time he was eating. After we've done it for a few days what I'll start doing and we're gonna is, we're gonna see again we're gonna yeah, eventually yeah, see yeah. with the target stick um because then I'll because then I'll start clicking before I give him the food because then what he should do and that's when you know it's connected in his brain he should hear the sound and then look at the bowl because like that means food so his eyes should dart back and back and forth between me and that's when you know it's clicked so that's when you can start lengthening your click and reward and then start introducing other tools like the target stick the fun thing that, that that happens in a lot of cases, not with every animal, but with a lot of them, is that they will they will start to try out different things to see if if that will result in yeah, the... Yeah, if, 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 if they'll get a bonus, if they'll get something positive out of it, they will. They but will that's try. not all that does it, right? A lot of them do, but you see it a lot in the playful characters, so it's like the younger animals will try their luck a lot. Um, parrots will try their luck a lot. Cats are usually very methodical, they're very logical in their thinking. And Keto is four or five years old now, so he might be past the whole kitten, think kitten thinking. But uh, we'll find out how it goes. Getting used to life in the rescue zoo. Keto is slowly getting more and more used to life in the rescue zoo. He's getting familiar with his new food, his keepers, the sounds and the smells, and he loves his training. But what about all the guests visiting the rescue zoo? How has Kato reacted to all the visitors? I asked director Joanne and Alex this question. Hi Alex and Joanne. Hi. So, uh, normally I am only able to track down our head keeper Alex, but today <laughs> I also have our zoo director, Joanne. And I just wanted to ask you guys, how is Kato the new car Kale doing? Well, he's actually he's doing all right. He's he's only been here for a short period so far, and as you've seen on some of the other videos, he was he's getting a big enclosure. It was very overwhelming for him, and he's been having to get used to to the guests this year yeah, as well. His first season with the guests. Here. Yeah, um, so. so that's like new sounds and things he has to get used to there. So it it was a bit overwhelming for him, but it's it's a good thing as well because like you notice that with, even with your animals at home. They need to get used to the new smells and new sounds and things like that. And we do actually notice in, in some of the other animals that it actually provides a form of stimulation for them. So it's, it's, it's a good thing that the guests come and visit us and it's just something Kato's got to get used to. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> anything, anything specific, Joanne, in, uh, in getting him here, his rehabilitation that you are you know, happy with, proud of, anything we're doing right now? Yeah. I would say I'm happy about that he is uh, relaxed in some way and he's eating and he, I think he's feeling secured with the staff um, 
and uh, and I can see that he laughed when we um, trained him, for example, and that that means a lot, like, uh, actually. We can uh, learn him a lot of stuff. I can see. Yeah, we've gotten to the point now that if uh, anyone that he read, like keeper or you or Johan, if you go anywhere near the training spot, he comes running right over. He gets very excited. But just one last thing I want to ask. Um, so we talked a bit about you know how he was a bit afraid of people in the start mm -hmm. in the rescue zoo, and now he's getting more used to them. And I just want to emphasize that in general with the animals here at the rescue zoo, they are actually it's a good thing that we have mm -hmm. people come visit, right? Yeah, well, yeah, of course it is. And also, also when the animals get um, if they do get anxious or stressed about the guests, and you have to look at what the problem is and. We, when it came to, for example, Kato, who was, is a smaller cat, well then, we built him a platform and that's relaxed him so much. So again, it's all about reading your animals. Um, so he's a lot more relaxed now with the guests. And again, like with most of the animals, it's actually far more stimulation for them. It's exciting, it's, it's nice when there's, when there's a bit of life in the zoo. Yeah, and the new plateau, he can get higher up mm -hmm. and look down at the guests. And that gives mm -hmm. him a more secure feeling, I think, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Let's uh, continue some happy, happy years with Kato here at the rescue zoo. Yeah, definitely. yeah, definitely. We are going to continue to follow Kato's journey here in the rescue zoo. And if you want to see more of Kato, we recently did a special enrichment with all the bigger cats in the rescue zoo. And Kato was actually the first one to get his enrichment in that video. So if you want to see more of Kato, I'm going to link it down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this story about Kato. Please ask me anything down in the comments about Kato and I'll be sure to answer all your questions. It was Nico here guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. Thank you all for watching.